Living matter will cover an area of approximately 3,500 square meters. You'll see over 300 works and 12 hours of video by 55 artists from 16 countries. This project explores what place people have in the world, as solving environmental problems requires first making a change in oneself. People should ask themselves this and make an effort to find the answers which are hidden deep inside. Some questions will be more abstract, such as, who am I? While others will be more specific. Who am I in this world? What does this world offer me? And what do I bring into this world? This exhibition is inspired by the ideas of the great Russian geologist and geochemist Vladimir Vernadsky. He was one of the first to discover people's ability to change the environment. This manifested in his concept of living matter in the biosphere, by which he meant all living creatures of the planet. The scientist believed that Earth's evolution was a single process in which humans and nature were equals. Vernadsky developed his theories between 1920 and 1930, which back then were largely ahead of their time. We're used to thinking about nature as something detached and isolated from us, yet still available for our use and consumption. This exhibition is an attempt to eliminate the boundaries between people and nature. This project presents people, animals, plants, and even inanimate objects as having equal value. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, people possess some properties of inanimate objects. And secondly, objects can, in fact, change the world. The artists explore this exact idea in their works. For example, the inflatable, chain-formed structure, the Blue River by Irina Korina, imitates the flow of water and represents our connection to the elements. The author debunks the common idea that the human and natural, or active and passive, are completely different. Finnish artists Laura Gustafsson and Terika Hapoya criticize the present distance between people and nature. Two installations from their Embrace Your Empathy series, featuring flags and video, are reminiscent of advertisement-like aesthetics. They demonstrate an ideal world where people and animals are equal and empathy is the prime value. The exposition in the next room begins with a video installation by Selma Gerbuz called We Are Here. The two-minute video shows the dance of the African Maasai tribe in which its members represent people who are in touch with nature. For a moment, the image gets blurry and the figures fade out. The performers dissolve into their surroundings and then the cycle repeats. After death comes revival and the dance begins again. Astrid Mintikir's The Hermit explores the relationship between man and nature, where people have to equip themselves with the skills to adapt to an ever-changing environment. With her conch shell sculptures, each forming a habitat for a human being, the Danish artist highlights the importance of adapting and mutating in order to survive in the future. Never-ending cycles of birth and decay of the flesh are reflected in Ustina Yakovleva's jellyfish-like textile objects. Her art has a very tactile quality, as the process of making it consists of sewing and beadwork, which alludes to the ancient practice of creating ritual objects. In the room on the left, you'll see artworks by Dmitry Plavinsky, the only 20th century artist presented in this exhibition. In his works, the artist alludes to ancient civilizations and rituals. They show specific layers of the human consciousness, which contains different cultural codes and memories shared across generations. This is Plavinsky's way of connecting past and present. It highlights that history and time are preserved in all of us and that this knowledge is engraved on our minds and unites us with the rest of the world. Giuseppe Lucari's installation, Humus, is located in the Long Corridor. The Italian artist's work contains a network of tree roots hanging from the ceiling of the gallery. 
It represents that nature is ubiquitous, but that we can only perceive this installation through the people around it. This artwork is site-specific, which means that it aims to give the viewers a unique experience associated with a particular place and moment, and is indeed a novel experience for the viewer. In the center of the hall, you will see the entrance of a room with works by Swiss-Canadian photographer Marie-Jeanne Moussiol. The artist endeavors to capture the energy transfers occurring around plants, which reveal everything the plant underwent in the past. Captured on negatives with their electromagnetic field, the plants radiate a light, which is basically a photogram. Moussiol moves beyond the visible reflecting the dynamism of living plants with their scratches and healed cracks. Her works make it possible to illustrate the real past of inanimate matter. Ecology is about each one of us. It's no wonder that in recent years, ecological issues have overtaken political and social agendas in contemporary art. The Living Matter Project speaks the universal language of basic concepts. However, some projects tackle the problems of a specific area or region, its political situation and history. For instance, the Prea Kun Long, or Way of the Spirit, video installation by Cambodian artist Khwai Sam Nang tells a story which happened in the recent past. Take the story of the Areng Valley, one of the richest ecosystems in Southeast Asia and the territory of the Chong ethnic minority group. In 2014, it was practically destroyed due to the construction of a dam for a hydroelectric power station. The area was saved by the local people, charity funds, and Buddhist monks who came together in protest against it. At the end of the hall is Vitaly Barabanov's Reliquary of Organic Painting. The artist seeks to create paintings within nature, where nature plays an integral part in the artistic process. To create his circular abstract paintings, Barabanov puts canvases in special containers to grow the painting. The paintings themselves become the soil which the artist irrigates with a pigmented organic solution. At the end of the process, the author takes the paintings out and finally stretches the canvases. The next part of the exhibition further investigates the complex interconnection between the living and non-living. In his Basin of Attraction installation, French artist Jonathan Pep infuses inanimate objects with feelings and desires. He enables them to move, thus bringing the living and non-living closer together. On the right side you will find works by Margot Trushina. The series My Second Body Exercises for Developing Empathy is inspired by Daisy Hildyard's The Second Body. The premise of the second body is that all human beings have two bodies, the physical and the virtual. The physical body is that which can eat, drink, and sleep, while the virtual is the impact and footprint we leave on the environment. Trishina focuses her work on the connection between these two bodies and the environment, questioning whether they do have an influence on their surroundings or whether they are invulnerable to the changes in the world. To the right, attached to the wall, you will see works by Russian artist Ilya Fedotov Fyodorov. There are three masks made for the performance entitled A Moth and a Bat Are Flying Into the Light. Right beside the masks, you'll see stainless steel with laser engravings, ceramics, and the spider-like creature that takes up many matters and can't get anything done but enjoys its life and eats those around him. Fedotov Fyodorov's works criticize how common it is for people to distance themselves from nature, going so far as to deny nature within themselves. The artist shows similarities between people and animals in an attempt to thin out these existing boundaries. Next, let's turn to Alexei Buldakov's Kvas relic. It is a bacterial cellulose column, material produced by fermentation. On the outside, the bacterial cellulose resembles animal skin or dead flesh, and what you see before you is indeed a living organism. 
If the material comes into contact with water, it will trigger the bacteria to move and interact with the environment. In this way, it therefore erases the boundaries between living and dead. In his Hydromorphs series, Vlad Kulkov experiments with sculptures to make various creatures which emerge on the border between water and earth, just as all living beings of the earth originally came from the depths of the ocean. Denise Prosilov's sculptures from the Black Soil series show people and mushrooms morphed together. In that process, people are the ones who acquire new traits from the artist. This idea is something uncommon for European culture since we usually tend to humanize animals. With this, the author wants to emphasize that ecosystems are dependent on various species and organisms, including mushrooms, but can flourish without humans. Artist Taisia Kuratkova refers to the future in the post-apocalyptic world that she unravels in her Dark Forest series. The forest here is foremost and dominant, while abandoned science and military buildings peek through the thickets of overgrown grass, trees, and exotic herbs. The project Dark Forest includes black marker drawings of herbs on the back of oilcloths stitched together with colored thread. The idea for this project came to the artist after reading a book called Russian People, its customs, ceremonies, traditions, superstitions, and poetry. In this book, 19th century ethnographer Mikhail Zabwilin describes medicinal and magical herbs. Her miniature works, Mushrooms, are devoted to three kinds of bacteria that can recycle plastic in their digestive systems, turning it into organic matter and relieving the world from its toxic waste. Next to the miniatures, you can see photographs of these gold mining bacteria. On the right, you'll see Vlad Kulkov's painting. It is in vertical format and is painted with vigorous, broad strokes on a semi-transparent background, on top of which the artist places drawings reminiscent of natural forms. In the next room, you have a chance to see Intimate Distance, the installation by Swedish artist Roland Persson. The installation itself is a naturalistic sculpture of a cactus, surrounded by many bottles and glasses. In his practice, Persson looks at the charged ideas and expectations of nature that we hold, and takes interest in the ways we describe and understand nature in relation to feelings, fears, politics, sexuality, and death. His works can be seen as representations of human beings viewed through the revealing lens of nature. The flora here spreads into the gallery space, like the roots of the cactus sculpture penetrate their way through any material or surface. Next to the cactus, you can find Sergei Filatov's sound installation, Seed Shaker. It consists of transparent, spherical vessels hanging on wires with seeds inside of them. The spheres have eccentric motors attached to them, which produce movement. Each sphere also has its own unique melody. The tone of the melody changes if you place something different inside. Seed Shaker represents a point in the life cycle when energy is only just about to be released. Each seed, each idea, and each person strives to fulfill its purpose. On the right, you can see paintings and graphics by Anna Andrzejewskaya. The artist builds a narrative through a series of symbols, signs of natural phenomena and changes, objects and members of the contemporary world. Take a minute to guess what they are. There are no wrong answers. At the end of the hall, you will find an installation by Anastasia Petyomkina called Kimono. It consists of a traditional Asian costume fabric with pictures of withered or infected herbs projected onto it. The artist gives her viewers the opportunity to refrain from perceiving them in a conventional manner and to instead see their intricate beauty. Next to Kimono, we can see a kimberlite mineral, which is capable of absorbing carbon dioxide just like plants do. To the opposite kimono, you can find works by Slava Nesterov, 
scattered across the other part of the hall. They combine organic and artificial materials, various polymers, and plastic. It is a reference to the immortality of organic bonds. They do not decay, and their states and forms simply change. Nesterov's objects are engaged in conversation with each other, as if they were alive, while the presence of the spectator is secondary and unimportant to their interaction. In her Sad Mushrooms, French artist Anne-Charlotte Finel films a mushroom farm located in a former underground gypsum quarry. A disease has spread throughout the farm, and the digital noise activates and belies the stillness of the image. Rather than being confronted with identifiable growing crops, viewers are witnessing microcellular activity. You can find drawings from the Cell Portraits series by American artist Somer Roman. These drawings reflect microscopic cross-sections of selected plants and parts of the human anatomy. The two life forms are very different and yet share so many similarities. Following these is a sequence of ceramics by Dina Salikin and Daniil Antropov. Dina Salikin finds inspiration in nature and explores its influence on human life. Her ceramics embody the resistance between organic and human nature. This is reflected in the character of her ceramics, which varies from soft and mellow to aggressive. Similarly, Daniil Antropov creates ceramics as if from a fantastic planet with its own ecosystem. Small plaster objects by Finnish artist Alma Heikkila complete this row with a curious imitation of nature. A tree branch, a piece of bark, a wood plank seemingly covered with organic growth, they're all painted with bright, even psychedelic colors. Her other work, found living in total darkness, is located in the center of the room. The double-sided painting, which appears to glow from the inside, is dedicated to the life of soil organisms. All their internal processes are usually hidden from the human eye, but the artist makes us pay attention to them. She shows us how amazing and complex they are, and how even these tiny organisms influence the environment. On the right, next to one of the previous artists, you can see a piece by South Korean artist Jung Kyung Jong, Collapsing Form 2. The painting itself has a leaf-like motif repeated over and over again, with the repetition used as a construct to form optical illusions and three-dimensional shapes. According to the artist, the motif offers the solution for trying to find the way toward unification, weaving the world together via repeated organic shapes within geometric architectural forms, east and west, nature and culture, where both the man-made and the organic have value. On the left, you can find three works by Ilya Fedotov Fyodorov. They explore the distance between people and nature, along with accepting yourself as a species. Behind the protruding wall, you will find a video performance by French-Moroccan artist Hisham Birada, Presage. Presage's series brings together aquatic landscapes chemically activated in glass. Berata manipulates and drops various chemicals into an aqueous solution, where a hermetic little world later appears with a whole range of components in various colors and shapes. The video performance shows the chemical reactions and compositions, immersing the visitor in a unique experience containing gradually changing landscapes. Now we return to the main room and see graphics by Finnish artist Ville Andersson. His landscapes capture memories, parts of his experience. His pencil and ink drawings depict figures in motion, which allude to the healing or calming effects of movement. The characters' games or dancing represent an attempt to overcome emotional trauma. Right behind these works, you will find Self-Generation, a series of graphics by Anastasia Potemkina. 
With these works, the artist explores the idea of spontaneous creation of living matter from the non-living. In the Classical period, Middle Ages, and the Renaissance period, people used to believe that the lowest forms of life, such as snakes, mice, or rats, emerged from dirt and rotten flesh. Throughout the years, folklore contained the recipes for creating living things. Although Pasteur's lab proved in the 18th century that self-generation was impossible, modern technology now allows us to create and sustain almost any life form. Even today, we can see that artificial materials are capable of nurturing and changing the organic environment to the point that it becomes fertile ground for living organisms to grow. On the opposite wall, we see watercolor drawings from the Overgrown series by Finnish artist Kati Immonen. Her humanless world is a mystical space, which is completely overtaken by nature. Video and digital paintings by Japanese artist Ryoichi Kurokawa are located in the next room. He transforms analog images of nature into digital streams. His Ichren series is inspired by the transformation of charged particles into chaotic energy. Each work is a diptych. The right side depicts ordered motion, and the left spontaneous and turbulent. The stream's evolution is made possible by the conflict of the two opposites, order and chaos. Alongside Ryoichi Kurokawa's works, you can find the installation Black Sun by Alexei Martins. The artist uses his works to ponder about renewable sources of energy by using solar panels. The relationship between civilization and nature is a recurring theme in Martin's works. His projects often show that they can coexist peacefully. Technological advances develop alongside animals, imitate them, and become a part of the organic world. Objects by art duo Recycle Group which are placed along the wall on the left, continue to explore the closeness of technology and living matter. Their Zero Zero project is dedicated to Null Island. This is a point not connected to any real place on the map, but it is the busiest spot in the virtual world. This is the final destination of all the errors in phones and GPS systems. Neuronet is a sphere-like sculpture made of rubber and filled with air. In an attempt to revive the non-living, the artists create the object with a breathing structure. Point two captures a split second on the imaginary null island by showing a panoramic view of the place. Profile one and profile two personify the individuals who accidentally came to the non-existent island. Their trace is all that is left, and they are broken down into digital particles. The next digital artwork is Jakob Kutsk Stansen's Aquaphobia. The Danish artist constructs a multi-layered virtual landscape. His works explore the themes of extinction and the destruction of ecosystems. The work is inspired by studies about treating aquaphobia, the fear of water, as an entry point to transform perceptions about our relationship to future water levels and climates. Some environmental problems are especially concerning for contemporary artists. For instance, Maria Fyodorova is very much concerned with the effect that technology has on the environment. The artist bases her multimedia artwork, Terminal, on the research undertaken by Vladimir Vernadsky. Fyodorova is convinced that the future holds new environmental problems for people, and that one of them is the rising level of space debris. Earth's orbit hosts 128 million pieces of junk, which are not only dangerous for satellites, but also for Earth itself. The vulnerability of living creatures is also explored in Denise Prosilov's first crew series. By depicting astronauts and animals who were sent to space by humans, the artist comments on the hierarchy of the world. In this hierarchy, people occupy the dominant position, and animals in turn are left without a choice. On the way to the next room, we will see photographs by Zhenya Mironov. One of the most important themes in the artist's work is finding grandeur in the small, 
by zooming into the objects that appear in front of his lens. With his work, the artist presents humans in close proximity to nature through the molecules that occupy the foreground. Vladimir Vernadsky acknowledged that people can change the environment. However, these changes are not always for the better. He saw this ability as a natural process of the evolution of all living things and the planet itself. The geological role of a person is therefore logical and inevitable. The important thing is choosing the right constructive vector. Finnish artists Laura Gustafsson and Terika Hapoya explore this exact idea in their three-hour-long video work called Becoming. Many artists are concerned with environmental footprint, a quantitative measure showing the appropriation of natural resources by humans. Becoming a Sentinel Species is a film by Danish artist Cecil Mariton. Her film follows two researchers who want to become sentinels. They experimentally introduce microplastics into their own bodies and explore their effects on them. Pavel Otdelnov's Psychozoic Era series is dedicated to the anthropogenic impact on nature. By using satellite images, the artist located industrial waste bins and examined how they affect neighboring areas. To create his Shitty Sea series, Otdelnov traced household waste with several GPS trackers and then undertook the same path that each tracker went. Omnia Mutantur which can be directly translated as Everything Changes, is an installation by Finnish artist duo IC98. The story unfolds on a fisherman's farm, where we travel through the timeline of evolutionary history. Finally, millions of years into the post-human future, we stand on the shore again. There, we see animate and inanimate nature leveled to black dust, gazing towards the stars of the Milky Way. Nothing changes, nothing disappears, and so the cycle begins again. Becoming is a three-hour-long video work by Laura Gustafsson and Terika Hapoya. It is based on interviews that ponder what nascent forms of humanity and being should be nurtured so that they can grow and create a just, sustainable future. In his Horn of Plenty series, Alexander Shurinkov shows the flip side of the world of luxury and overconsumption. Shurinkov created his digital collages on marble tabletops, reminiscent of works by Florentine craftsmen. But instead of marble mosaics, the artist uses photographs of dumps and piles of unsold goods. The contrasts and bitter irony are evident. Next to this work is an installation that consists of a handmade fishnet made out of plastic bags, which emanates the desire to consume. While artists like Adelnov and Shurinkov prefer to see themselves as social commentators, the artist Yelena Artemenka tries to find answers about the future and damage that people might cause to the planet. Her Fossils series looks like art from a typical museum collection, Fossilized plastic waste is featured as a footprint from the timeline of human history. Next to the Fossils series is a piece by Taisia Kuratkova. Yet again, it is a picture from the present. The installation is made out of waste found in natural landscapes. Alexander Pogorzelski is interested in the line between the predictability of everyday matters and the uniqueness of every moment. In his watercolor drawings, the artist depicts glimpses of reality and sometimes closely studies ordinary objects. Out of context, they can evoke all kinds of associations, and yet they emanate the feeling of regret about people going on with life not thinking about our impact on the world around us. Going forward a little, you will see the textile pieces of Yevgenia Noshkina. They are knitted with strips of fabric, scraps of old cloth, and patches of cloth. 
With the textile, the artist creates objects that look like organic structures. Each object is a reflection of a new anthropogenic geology, that is, knowledge about the impact of human activity on the geological environment. Agency of Singular Investigations is an installation by Stanislav Shuripa and Anna Titova. It is a fragment of the model for a memorial complex dedicated to the history of Odradex, creatures of inhuman nature. The installation shows their history and evolution, from birth to establishment of independence. In the next room, two artists are presented. The Post installation by Anna Komarova and the Forest Journal project by naturalist artist Ilya Delgov. Komarova's work creates an image of the other forest, deprived of its natural fauna. However, its internal life can be felt through a hug. Just a simple touch reveals that each tree has its own unique rhythm, beat, and sound. You should just embrace the childlike curiosity and wonder of a young naturalist. Let's have a look at Anastasia Kainianung's work. Her plant reporter project started out as a personal blog with pictures of various weeds, thoughts, and experiences. It presents flora as a system of living beings with feelings capable of empathy. Next to the plant reporter project, we see Anastasia Kizilova's succulent therapy. Succulents, or sedums, are plants that can accumulate water in their tissues. Here they sprout through cotton cloth and gradually replace the fabric. At first it acts as a barrier, then it deteriorates. As a result, the line between the human and organic worlds disappears. I. Smirnov's installation was built specifically for the Living Matter exhibition. He based his work on the summer school program for the educational project Earth and Writing, a study of the Anthropocene. The program can be regarded as the installation's epilogue. The installation illustrates the central idea of contemporary ecological philosophy. The relationship between people and Earth has reached a dead end, which caused the current ecological crisis. Living matter is more than an exhibition. It has a special program which will teach you about ecological thinking and sustainable living. What's more, the Living Matter Project will be the first carbon-neutral exhibition in Russia. Green Vest will plant conifers on a three-hectare site in the Vladimir region, which will fully offset the project's carbon footprint for the next 30 years. These days, environmental awareness has become synonymous with evolved individuals and developed society. Redefining the status of the individual has become an increasingly central component in intellectual and philosophical discourse. Living matter is a way of celebrating the legacy of Vladimir Vernadsky as well as a call for more sustainable living. It is also a reminder to cherish and protect our beautiful world by developing ecological thinking personally. The Living Matter Project is held by the State Trechikov Gallery together with the Polytechnic Museum and Triumph Gallery. The exhibition is curated by Yulia Aksyonova.